today to do my book of the month review for Mythago Wood by Robert Holdstock. <laughs> this is my October 2019 book of the month. Um, I'm back to my normal book of the month style where I do a spoiler free section in the beginning and I dive into some spoilers and book club questions at the end and I will go from there. So Mythago Wood is the first book in a series. This book specifically follows Stephen. You go from his point of view, he is your main protagonist and he is returning from recovery in World War II to come home to his family home in Rye Hope Wood. And when he comes home, he kind of discovers that his brother Christian is falling into the same kind of spiral in regards to the mysteries of the wood as his father did. Side note here, for whatever reason, my book on the back says the brother's name is Christopher. And it's definitely Christian, because that's how he's referred to in the entire book, is Chris or Christian. So I'm not sure why Christopher's on the back, but just a fun side note. So I was hella confused when I started reading. Uh, I was really interested in this book when I unwrapped it. I hadn't really heard of it before, and it really is kind of like a low fantasy with some magical realism, and I do enjoy magical realism. I don't read a ton of it, so I was really excited to see how that played out. And with that, um, I'll go to my likes and dislikes. So do my three likes, then I'll do my three dislikes, and we'll go from there. My first like uh, was Rye Hope Woods themselves. I really liked the idea of this magical wood and that the mythagos are created kind of by the people who enter the woods and how they imagine the people that fill these roles. <clears throat> so overall, I found it like a really interesting setup. The setting itself was pretty interesting because of that. Uh, my second like is just the role of obsession, because like I said, uh, the book is really Stephen coming back and finding his brother Christian, who's kind of go is going into the same spiral that his dad has had been in, which was this obsession with the mysteries of what's going on in Rye Hope Wood. And then my third like is the idea of the Mythagos themselves. I found them very interesting and in how and like the lore behind each of the characters was really interesting because it kind of showed um, how far back it goes and how each generation of each civilization kind of goes back to the storytelling from the previous generation and I found that really interesting. Uh, next I'll go to my negatives and there were some. <laughs> um, one negative it's not so much that I found this to be a huge negative, but I know a lot of people had talked about it in their reviews and I do see where they're coming from and it's that the fantasy elements take itself very seriously and I think this lends itself to the fact that it is magical realism. It plays a very big role in a lot of the interactions between the wood and the rest of the world and the wood and the characters. I found it really lacked that whimsy that you get with a lot of magic that you, when you have magic present in fantasies. And I, like I said, I really think it's just the fact that it was, there's a lot more magical realism than I initially had thought. And that's part of why it feels like it takes itself so seriously. And if you're looking for fantasy in terms of high fantasy and a lot of whimsy and just general, a lot more general joy surrounding the fantasy, I, this probably isn't the book for you. My next negative is the lack of depth in the characters. I have said previously, I am a big fan of well-written deep characters and I found these characters to be very very flat and I think that is because they were written to fill very specific stereotypes and that it was very strict they were very strictly held within those confines so you have um, this is especially present with some of the mythagos and while they weren't as important to the story I felt this also bridged over into the main characters and that you just didn't have as much character connection as I would typically prefer with a book. My third negative is the slow pacing. Uh, the slow pacing here was an issue for me because I found it very hard to get into the book because it did start at a very specific point and it just it took a long time to get any kind of action going. You had the first maybe quarter to third of the book was very very slow and then there was like a single event and that sped it up a little bit and then you had the actual like inciting incident of the plot and then it just like took off from there. So by the end the pacing was okay but it was just very hard to get into. That first half was just especially hard for me to get into because the pacing, even though it increased 
still wasn't like really, really quick and it just took a long time for anything really important to happen in the plot. All right, so moving on to the characters, I'm gonna talk about Steven, I'm gonna talk about Christian, and I'm gonna kind of just summarize briefly about the characters overall. Uh, Steven, he's your main character. He's coming back from World War II, so he is an injured war vet with some PTSD, I would think. Um, his father has passed away, his brother is now spiraling into that same obsession with the woods and it's very concerning to him. Um, although I found him interesting, like a little interesting in terms of how he was approaching everything, his fear of his brother going down the same path of its, as his father, and the love he felt for him, I also found him pretty shallow because he didn't really grow a lot and there was a lot of opportunity for growth in this book just because of how the adventure plays out once they get into the woods. Pretty flat character, pretty average character, nothing special. Christian falling into this spiral. It's interesting to see his character change, but his character doesn't change in a way that's incredibly interesting to me. It doesn't provide a lot of character growth. It is a lot of looking at how like a, a parent can impact a person's life because he's falling into the exact same spiral for the exact same reasons as the father and it's just really hard to watch. And that kind of leads me into the rest of the characters. Like some of the characters, because they're mythago, they are pretty flat because they are these archetypes. But even the characters, other characters themselves, all fall into specific stereotypes and there isn't a lot of growth for it, unfortunately. Um, however, like the characters weren't terrible, they just weren't really deep and I didn't get a lot of connection with them, which I usually prefer. Uh, so now I'm going to move on to the rating. Uh, following the rating, I will be burging into a spoiler portion where I'll cover some book hub questions and I will cover some spoiler top conversation topics that I just want to discuss briefly. Um, so for this book, I'm actually giving it a three out of five. It wasn't a terrible read. I enjoyed it for the most part, but it wasn't a book that I was incredibly in love with and I don't feel like a lot of it is going to stick with me in the long run. There weren't a lot of moments that I felt were really defining and imprinting themselves on my memory. And with that, like I said, there were a lot of elements I liked, even if none of them have the lasting impression that I get with some other books. I didn't get a book hangover when I finished. Um, however, with that, there are also a few elements that I did not care for either. Um, three out of five for me is a pretty run-of-the-mill uh, rating. I would definitely read something by this author again or try to continue the series. However, um, I probably wouldn't come back and read this book again. That being said, the writing style of the author does lend itself to reading it pretty quickly. Um, although the pacing is slow in the beginning, like I said, once it sped up, it was really good because he has this way of describing things and being a little bit wordy, but not overly flowery. So you weren't, didn't feel like you were wading through too much. And that's all I'm really going to say. Um, this is going to be my final warning for this. Um, we are going into the spoiler section now. If you do not want to be spoiled for any aspect of the story, I would click out here um, and or and if you are interested to see what I have to say and what kind of questions I'm going to talk about with the book, please listen on. All right, so with the book club questions, I have six pecked out that I'm going to talk about. They are kind of my go-to questions for this because I didn't feel like there's anything special or specific I wanted to talk about in terms of the book club questions. The first being, what was your initial reaction? Uh, for me, my initial reaction was interest, even though it was very slow paced because the way that he set up Rye Hope Woods and all the mythogos within it was very, very interesting to me. My second is, what is your favorite chapter or scene? My answer for this is that I really enjoyed a lot of the interactions that uh, Keaton and Stephen had while they were traveling through the woods. The interaction, this interaction specifically that I enjoyed were the interactions where they ran into Christian or Christian's men. And the reason I found them interesting was just like, because they were both in there because of obsession and just the way the different obsessions clashed and like the idea of obsession and possession of ideas. And it was just, very interesting to see them play out and like there's also that tie of like brotherly competition in there too. It was a more interesting aspect of the book for me. My third question is how did the characters change throughout the books? Uh, they didn't really change, they just got more attached to their obsessions and that is basically it. Question four, how did you feel about the ending? Um, I actually found this book to have a pretty reasonable ending. Um, it was wrapped up enough that if you didn't enjoy the book enough to continue on with the series, I think you'd be very satisfied with the amount of information you had. 
Um, however, it did leave enough open that if you continue with the series like I'm intending to do, um, that there is enough of a story that I think the second book will also be pretty driven, and I think that that could be a very interesting read as well. Uh, question five, um, would you read another book by this author? Um, as I said kind of earlier on, I probably would try another book by this author. It'll probably be another book in this series. I did enjoy his writing style enough that I would give it another try, but if my level of enjoyment is the same, I probably won't try beyond another couple books for this for this author. Robert Holdstock, especially with this series, the Mythalga Wood series, it does seem to be more of a modern classic within fantasy. And I find that the modern classics in fantasy and sci-fi are pretty hit and miss for me. And then moving on to question six, um, what does this book, what other books does this book remind you of? And I actually don't have an answer for this one um, because I haven't read a lot of like modern classic fantasy novels. Um, I know they're out there, but I've read kind of the older fantasy like you get with Lord of the Rings. But that's very different from this, and this is very different from some of the other modern fantasy I've read, like The Rivers of London and The Unkindness of Magicians, and um, what I've heard people ta say about series like the Mistborn series. And because of that, I really don't have a recommendation. I just listed several series and books that are very good within the fantasy genre, in my personal opinion, but I don't have anything that really reminds me of this specifically. And with that, I will move on to my spoilers discussion. A couple points I kind of want to talk about. They're not too ranty and ravey like some of them have been previous. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is Gwyneth and her backstory. I actually found it really interesting and I really wish that her character had been more interesting because she had such a rich lore and history within her growing up and the novel, I think that's how the novel starts and I found it very very intriguing. After you get going the story is the most important part of her. She doesn't have a lot of personality once you meet her which is unfortunate. I think it's just like it's really just um, a result of having like some really subtle misogyny involved in her character writing. I know people have gone on a huge rants about the misogyny present in this book and it's just a byproduct of the kind of book it is and when it was written. So which leads me to my second point. Um, I just wanted to talk about the misogyny, both subtle and not subtle, kind of present in this book. Um, there is a little bit of sexism, but like I said, I find that to be really common in books written kind of between the 50s and the 80s, and I believe this book was written in the early 80s. I find it specifically with fantasy and sci-fi, and I think a lot of it had to do with just who was writing the book and the social norms at the times. So I try not to like get too overly offended by it, and I try to enjoy the story. Um, like I said, for me, I think the sexism in the book and the adherence to different stereotypes and archetypes really made as actually what made the characters so flat for me. I just wanted to say like I do see that it's there so please don't comment like oh I can't believe you read this this is a terrible misogynistic book and it's like no I understand those elements are there I just tried to enjoy the concept of the novel. <laughs> and the dino thing I'm going to talk about a little bit is I really liked their explanation of time dilation within the woods and how it really played out really effectively with the plot. I think it was probably the most interesting part for me was as they got deeper in the woods, the time dilation from present day to where they were going was really, really, really different. Like, I think they got to like a Neolithic um, time period and I really liked it because it really gave an interesting and varied cast of characters that they met in the woods as they went on their adventure and each significant jump back in time, I felt set, think, um, really kind of made you feel promised that you were getting to the end of the book, you could see the light at the end of the tunnel, and that the overarching plot was going to come to an end, and you just had a very visible end goal, and I think that those steps of going back in time really helped push that forward, and really made you feel a lot accomplished and productive as you were reading forward. And with that, I don't really have anything else I want to talk about that kind of really encapsulates everything that I wanted to talk about with the book today and with that I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!